Hi, once again. Uh, welcome to another weekend broadcast, hence the casual attire. Um, topic today. Well, sorry, this is episode number 801. Yes, I crested the next hurdle, which is now in the 800s. <laughs> and the topic today is going to be a blunt one, which is your inner child directs your dating life. How's that working for you? Um, I thought I'd make the title pretty much overt this time because I've played subtle games before with how I can explain this, but I want to go straight to the point. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. Surprise, surprise, in case you didn't see that already in the broadcast. I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Um, it's a relationship-centric conversation. Gives you 50 principles to have an amazing relationship. Again, whether you're single or a couple, kind of biased about the book. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction, excuse me, relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, um, which informs my work, which drives my work, and also starts, which inspires these talks every day, which I've done now for over two years, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And as I mentioned, was today we're at episode number 801. And the topic today, again, is your inner child directs your dating life. And how's that working for you? So you may be wondering, what am I talking about? <laughs> in fact, I hope it does provoke some question in your mind going, what does that mean? So I'll elaborate and give you some insight, some clarity, and some direction on um, one, what it's about, two, why you're doing it, or two, how it shows up, and three, how to change it. Because if once you understand this is what's going on, you might be motivated to change it. So when I say your inner child is directing your dating life, I want to say literally, not sort of literally, but certainly energetically that's true. So imagine that you're giving, as I said this before in other, in other talks, I've said, imagine that you gave the car keys or gave the keys to your car to a five-year-old and let them drive. How comfortable would you feel? I would guess not very, especially if you're on a public street. So my thought with this and reminder to you about this is that as much as you would not give the keys to your car to a, to a, to a five-year-old, why would you give your dating life control to your five-year-old? And you're thinking, I don't do that, I don't do that. Well, not so fast. Let me speak to you as a, <laughs> from a, from a, from a um, now let me back up to another way. I, I've referenced uh, Bruce Lipton many times in my talks because of his book, The Biology of Belief, which talks about how we are programmed to believe things and how our body responds and everything else. One of the things he talks about in the book, which I'm very very aware of, and what I learned in my own studies in my master's degree, so this is this is psychologically based, so it's not just making stuff up, <laughs> shall we say, is that we basically formulate our way of looking at the world when we're very young. And that usually happens when we're usually around the area of three, four, or five years old. So we believe, excuse, excuse me, we make up our beliefs about the world through a very young lens. We're looking through the lens of the world and going, this must be the way life is. That applies to every area of life. That applies to money, especially, which is something a lot of people have challenges with because of the way they were raised around money. It also applies for specifically towards relationships in this context, although I would say that anything that I'm talking about here can apply to other areas of life as well because, again, because you've taken on the viewpoint of your adult life from a five-year-old perspective, you may be wondering why your life's not working the way you want. First of all, let me give you some examples of how day life works out in the negative sense of this, because it can work out positively too. I'll get to that in a moment. But also what you can do about changing it. So for some people, adult dating is a piece of cake and it works great and everything's perfectly wonderful. And oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, for many people, it doesn't work well. And this is the thing, is that when I said that your inner child is governing or directing your dating life, that could be a bad thing or a good thing, depending on your experience. So if it's going out really well, you may not want to change anything. But let me explain why it's happening the way it is, whether it is good or bad, and then you'll see if you want to change it or not. So, okay, first of all, imagine the five-year-old is seeing the way the world works and decides that's the way it's going to be, and it chooses that point forward. Now you're thinking, well, I'm not five years old anymore. 
Maybe you're not, but part of your brain still is. Our midbrain is really the, um, basically they call it mammalian brain, but basically what it really is is the, sub, is the subconscious, or it's actually the early consciousness that we were raised with. Excuse me. It was the early consciousness we looked at the world through, the lens we looked through. Again, three, four, five years old, we're seeing the way life works, and that becomes imprinted in our midbrain. Fast forward to today when you're an adult, where your frontal cortex is apparently running the show, I'm saying apparently because it's not really running the show, and your dating life may not be working out the way you think. So back to your three, four, five-year-old. At that age point in life, what was your family dynamics like? How was your relationship between your parents? Were you in a family that was really wonderful, everything was going great? I'll tell you about mine in a moment, just to give you an illustration. Maybe it was traumatic, maybe it was challenging. Or maybe it wasn't anything at all. Maybe you were in foster care. I mean, there are, there are different range. I mean, everyone has their own bringing. And I know quite a few people who went through the foster care system or adoption or were um, living with grandparents because their own parents weren't around, wherever that was. But if you're raising a family with your own parents, specifically in this example, because it does apply to the other ones too, how is the relationship between your parents? Also, how do you remember being treated by your parents, particularly as if you're a woman? how as a girl you were treated by your father and if you're a man how you're treated as a boy by your mother because it works both ways but it's not it's not one gender only it's both genders and so whether it was how your parents treated each other or how they treated you is the emphasis on how you believed love was expressed i'll say that one again because it's important Observing, witnessing how your parents treated each other or they treated you would be how your three, four, five-year-old would take on the belief of how love is expressed. And that belief would stay in there, in fact, still is in there, running automatically as a background hum, so to speak. Fast forward to being an adult and you're choosing to go into relationships consciously, going through app, dating apps, dating sites, meeting people socially, um, whatever it is you do in terms of meeting somebody, or maybe you're already married or have been married for years. And if you do some direct digging under the surface, like you start pulling away the surface, so to speak, at your previous dates, if you've been on several relationships, or if you're in a long-term relationship, the one you're in now, and notice what are the prevalent um, interactions, the way you're interacting with those people, how they're interacting with you, how they step up or don't step up, how they share love or don't share love, how they express themselves romantically or not, how you feel taken care of or not, all these different things. When you start making a, a mental list of those certain things that are there, especially if you've been in several relationships, you may become aware of, quite likely you will, of where there have been a similarity of experiences in all previous or most of the previous relationships going back in time. This is a good sign because if you're seeing this, you're now becoming aware of what was driving your relationships in the first place. So get to that. Those repeat experiences in the past relationships you've had that were negative, particularly this is the one that focuses on the negative ones again, because if everything's going great, nothing to change. But if things could be improved, if your relationship experience is not working the way you want, this is going to be the path through which it can change. And I said, I'll give you an example from my own life just to give you perspective or, or a, um, an example. So go back in time to see the common experiences in past relationships as I mentioned. Maybe there was a consistency of men who didn't step up if you're a woman. Maybe there was a consistency of your partner being a drunk or abandoning you or not showing up for you or being a workaholic or being abusive. Anything that is, a, and especially when you see that as a repeat experience in past relationships, that's a theme, that's a thread, that's a recognition. Now go back to your childhood, that four, three, four, five word I mentioned. If there's any commonality, if there's any um, resonance where you see at your younger age, you look back and see, oh yeah, I remember now with my parents. And the thing is, some of this stuff, especially if it's painful, may not be present, it may be suppressed, just to be clear. But you may be aware, if, you're, if you've done some work on yourself especially, to look back at your childhood and see how your parents interacted and go, hang on a second, I see something similar, where the way that my dad treated my mum 
is the way that the mate's partner has treated me, or vice versa. And maybe it's the mum treated you, maybe your dad. Or maybe the way they treated you. The way that, if you're a woman, the way that the, your father treated you has a commonality, or in some cases, an opposite experience, because that does happen too, by the way, of the way that the men you've been dating treat you now. If this is still not, if this is making sense to you, stay tuned because I do have some keys on this. And this 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 challenge we have is that we're not taught this stuff. This is the reason why I'm talking about it now is because there's no high school course that teaches you this. So this inbuilt, or I should say, pre-installed programming from a very young age is running all the way through automatically. But there's nobody telling you. By the way, this may be something's going on. You can change it. I may to say there's something going on. You can change it. So my own experience, just to share from my, my own life, and a lot of people think, well, I had a great upbringing because I was, with, I was raised in a family where my parents were together until my mum passed away in 2012. At that point, it's 59 years of marriage, which is quite an achievement for parents, and I'm, I have great respect for my parents for that. It, I, be, I personally believe watching my parents' relationship looking back now, especially in hindsight, is a very codependent relationship. They basically could barely live without each other, and it was an, it was an interesting paradigm to grow up with, because that was what inst was instilled in my li my life too when I was younger, and so I did I did definitely grow up through the codependent paradigm. Thankfully, I think don't know, but I think I'm out of it now. But that's another point. But the piece I want to talk about is in my early dating life, and I have shared this before on broadcast. This is not new for the, as we watch every one of our broadcasts. By the way, I'll tell you where you find the replays at the end of this, so you know where to find them. I spent most of my late teens, early 20s in very short-term relationships. They would be fun to get together, meet this girl, have a great time connecting. It would last two or three months, each one of these roughly. And I went through quite a few of them in my, again, late, late teens, early 20s. Actually, to be honest, until my late 20s, just to be transparent. And each time this relationship would last again two or three months, and then they would end abruptly. And the reason, that in, the reason why that ended abruptly, what would be the um, indication that we're going to end, is because we would get into an argument or an upset, or she would be pissed off at me about something. It was always her getting pissed off at me, just to be clear, because I never did anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a whole other story. But what would happen is at the end of the, that two or three month period, there would be some sort of upset, some argument, um, Well, dispute, I say is another word, and we'd break up every single time. Now, the thing was, is that I would, ooh, I have to say that, don't I? Yeah. I would do the breaking up, but I wasn't always the one that would actually leave. I would sometimes almost push the other person away so they would leave. Not proud of that. That was part of my young history, and I didn't know any, didn't know any better. But the thing is, is that I was in a place where I didn't understand why I couldn't be in love. Or should say, I was under the programming, let me say the other way around where because there was an argument, I stopped loving. Because my upbringing, again, three, four, five years old, especially around my parents was, they never argued. Now some people say, well, that'd be amazing to have a parent's relationship like that, because some people come from very abusive, painful relationships where there was discord and upset and, and challenging their families. I had a family dynamic, my parents never argued. Didn't mean they weren't upset with each other, but there was nothing expressed outside. And so my training, my programming, my belief that I was put in, put internally when I, in my midbrain when I was three, four years, five years old, was that loving relationships don't include arguments. My adult life, my early day in life, as I mentioned, always ended in an argument. So my wiring, my programming at a three, four, five year old stage was that if there's an argument, there is no love. Because in my upbringing, again, there was love, but there's no any arguments. They couldn't fit together. So my day life meant that if there was an argument, I was done. So my relationships ended because of arguments or upsets or some other dispute, as I mentioned. Because I didn't have, one, I didn't understand that it could be love after that. And two, I didn't have the tools to work through that. It meant a lot of um, lost love, ultimately, which is what part of my upbringing. But it trained me and it showed me this is one of the models. This is my learning that I went through. Thankfully, it could be a lot more painful than that, but it did work out. It wasn't. Well, it was emotionally painful for my ex my ex partners because I wasn't a very good partner at that time. Your experience may different, may be different, of course. Maybe you went through the same experience with your parents. I don't know, but I would suggest that you look clearly at your parents' dynamic, your parents' relationship, because you probably will see some seeds that were planted at a young age that influence your adult life. 
didn't influence it directly, but it came up as a young point because it came as a young age. Now, as I mentioned, this applies to other areas too. You would look at your parents, how they modeled money. That would also affect your adult money parents. One thing I'm working on as well is looking back at my parents' relationship with money as a um, precursor or, or a preview of what I was doing as an adult. You will have the same thing. Again, we're imprinted, we choose to take on the belief when we're three, four, five years old about how life works from our parents, which includes relationship, money, health, all sorts of different things. And for many of us, and I include myself on that one, we've been fighting against that limited programming for many years. I'm grateful I found the way through it, and I'm still working on some of it, so be transparent, but I know better now. And hopefully if you're watching this video, this talk, you're seeing a better way too. Now, how to change it, how to transform it, because that's really what you want to find out, I'm guessing, if this is resonating for you and you're going, I need to figure this out. I would say the, the shortcut is, let's talk and you can work with me, but I'm, not going to, I'm going to give you more clues than that. The recognition is the first step, to really get clear about what it is that happened when you were younger that you now see as the influence, inf the influence that was, a, um, it was the action that actually influenced your adult relationships and your adult life. So when you start seeing what happened when you're a child, you'll start now recognizing the parallel or the actual the resonance or the, um, let's say the duplication, but the same thing happening now as an adult that happened when you're a child amongst your parents' relationship. Once you get that clear, that's the first step. Hey Huntley, good to see you, my, good to see you this morning. Thanks for the love and appreciation every time you see me. I appreciate that. Um, good to see you, my broadcast. By the way, this is Facebook Live, in case you're wondering. It, was YouTube. it goes on YouTube, but it's always starting on Facebook Live. And I'll tell you when you find that at the back end as well. Um, and I'm going to put some links in the back end for those who want to get more help. So to change the wiring, first of all, is become aware. Just knowing that your childhood influenced your adult dating life is a first step. Seeing what happened when you were a child and being clear as a witness to it, not as a judge on this, by the way, be a witness to what happened, because what happened happened. As I say, you, can't change, you can change it, but judging doesn't help. So become a witness to what happened as a child around your parent, parental relationship, whatever that was, so you can start seeing the, the common commonality between your childhood upbringing and the way parents treated you and also your adult relationships that came up because of that, or I should say the parallel of that. That's, that's kind of one and two, or one and one and a half. Third piece, just to be distinct, is to ultimately, the simplest way of putting it, is transform your younger programming, change your youth, your childhood programming, the midbrain, so that you can become more present to what you really want to have in a relationship and change your relationship patterns. Part of that is to start learning better ways of being in a relationship, which is a bunch of skills. Again, my book has a bunch of them in it. I'll tell you about that in the back end. I should say I'll put a link to that in the back end. But also to reframe, to use a psychological term, and reprogram your, your young childhood beliefs about relationships. There are multiple ways of doing this. You can do this with different skills. I have, I've got a quite a toolbox of skills I've learned over the last 25 years, 30 years, that I can help you with that. There are different things with, with hypnotherapy, NLP, psychological counseling, therapy, um, coaching with me. There's different things you can use. So but focusing on that point to go back to your younger childhood and, and first of all, seeing what it was that you learned and imprinted as a young, impressionable three, four, five year old from your parents is the first step. And then changing the programming, changing the belief, having a different conversation with your younger self. So you can say, let's change what our beliefs are because you can do that. Even in hindsight, as an adult, you can change the beliefs aside because you're still in here, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I will leave a couple of links I mentioned in the comments. Some of the books are going to be in the comments for sure, and a discovery session consult with me is available as well. Um, there's a question about that. But this is kind of the piece I want to speak to is, is I should say to recap, is first of all, getting to know what it is you were raised with is first. Secondly, changing what was installed so you can have a different adult experience. If your relationships as an adult aren't working, this is one of the reasons why it can be happening that way. And the good news is you can change your future to be different from your past. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Um, so having said that, the reminder to you is you can do this. You can do it on your own. There's books out there as well. As I mentioned, there's, tra there's teachings, trainings. I'm talking to my video, so I'm gonna put a link in to talk to me because I can help you with this. Um, this is deeper stuff I know than some of my usual talks, especially after yesterday and a couple of days before that. I did mention um, 
on, on Friday, two days ago, I did a talk about being a ball buster part two, about how your upbringing may influence that. That's part of this conversation too. So I'd recommend watching that broadcast too for a different perspective, but also in understanding how your childhood may have influenced your adult life at that point too. A different, different path, same functionality. So having explained all that, I will put links in the comments as I mentioned. My book will be in there, um, my self-love practice, because frankly, if you've gotten a bit stuck in this area, self-love will help you, and a reach out for a discovery session with me. That's for the ladies, the discovery session. For the men who want to get some help, if there are men watching this, you can reach out to me on social media, just send me a direct message, and let me know you want some support, and I can talk to you privately offline. Um, I think that's gonna be about it. Oh, replays, you haven't seen my broadcast before. Hey Kim, I haven't seen you for a long time, nice to see my broadcast. Um, for the replays, you can find me on, this is my Facebook Live, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week. This is number 801, so again, I've done this for a while. So you can join me tomorrow at 802, 5 p.m. Pacific time on here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. Um, my replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then the replays also go to my YouTube channel. So first of all, on my business page on Facebook, please like that page, because I use the likes, that'll help. And on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. So you can watch the replays there and you can actually search more easily on YouTube because the way it lists the titles is much more um, compact. So with that, thank you for watching. Um, you've got the replays, the links will be in the comments afterwards. If you want help, reach out, get support. Don't just stuff it, it won't help if you just bury it. Um, because next relationship won't be any different from the past ones unless you change something. This is one of the things you can change. If you have thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, please put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. If you want direct help, you can message me over social media. Again, I'll put the links in the comments. You can reach out for discovery sessions to get some help and also get my book. Um, I appreciate you watching, as always. I thank you for being with me, and I do invite you, as always, please take care of yourself. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.